Today we're going to melt down some HDPE plastic trash and turn it into a guitar. There are a lot of different types of plastic and not all of them are compatible when you try to melt them together. I'm going to be using HDPE plastic, which is one of the more common types. I started with the caps from water bottles and put them into a blender to shred them into a coarse powder. I then switched to milk jugs, which were great because I could cut them up into smaller pieces with scissors. Look for the number and recycling logo that tells you what kind of plastic it is on the bottom of the containers. I also had a couple of these leftover buckets from Home Depot, which are also HDPE plastic, so I just sliced them up with my reciprocating saw and blended them as well. Laundry detergent and shampoo bottles were one of my biggest sources for this type of plastic. Now this particular detergent bottle had a printed on label, so I was a little concerned what would happen to that ink when I melted the plastic. I used this water jug to tote water onto construction sites and didn't need it anymore, so I broke that down. Now this was pretty thick, so I had to start with the reciprocating saw, and then I used tin snips to cut it up into smaller pieces, but even then the blender struggled a little bit with this thicker plastic. Peeling off labels and then cleaning off adhesive left over by the labels was the most time-consuming part. <laughs> it was also kind of discouraging because I thought I had collected a lot of plastic, but once you blend it into powder, it doesn't look like very much. I bought a guitar kit online that came with a wooden base. The wood was a little rough so I gave it a light sanding and then I filled in all the pre-drilled holes with epoxy putty. I'm going to use this blank to make a mold and I want to be able to overfill the mold so I want to make it a little bit deeper than just the base itself. So I cut out a piece of quarter inch plywood to give me a little bit of extra depth in the mold. I clear coated the wood and then used silicone to seal between the two pieces. I used aluminum flashing, melamine, and some scrap pieces of 2x4 to make a perimeter fence around the base. I just used my hot glue gun to stick the pieces together and then sealed them all with silicone. I want to be able to heat the plastic inside the mold, so I'm using a high temperature product from Smooth On. I'll put a link to it in the description box below. This catalyzed silicone can withstand temperatures up to 560 degrees Fahrenheit, which is great because I only need to get to about 350 degrees to melt the plastic. I filled the mold up with the shredded plastic and put it into an oven set to 350 degrees. This is an oven I don't use for cooking. I only use this for industrial processes like powder coating. After about an hour and a half of baking, the plastic started to melt and really settled down, so I just added some more powder on top. I did this a couple times, and then I put some parchment paper on top of the plastic, and then steel plates and weights on top of that. This is so that it'll really push the plastic down as it melts. The plastic will shrink quite a bit as it cools, and I don't want to shrink and pull up so I put a lot of weight and some clamps to really push it down so that I don't get too much shrinkage around the edges. The first blank that I made shrunk quite a bit, so this was the second try and it came out pretty good. But a small piece of the mold tore off on the second try, so I had to really pry that out. After using tin snips to clean up the edges, I made a router sled to flatten the backside. The plastic itself is really easy to machine, it's about the same hardness as wood. There was a little bit of warping around the spot where the net connects to the base, so I had to carefully re-carve out that recess. I used a roundover bit to smooth over the edges, a really long drill bit to connect the recesses that will allow us to wire the guitar, and then sanded the plastic up to 400 grit. I've seen a lot of really shiny epoxy guitars and I didn't quite want it to be that polished, so after the 400 grit I just went right to a buffing compound and buffed it out. This way it has sort of a sea glass plastic kind of look. This acrylic plate that came with the kit was a little bit too big for my purposes. I didn't want to cover up all this plastic that I'd worked so hard to produce. So I just used my Ryobi rotary tool to cut it down. 
Now, as you can tell, I'm not very musically inclined and have no experience with guitars. So I brought in my buddy, Brett from Skull and Spades. Be sure to check out his channel. He does really awesome work and he helped me assemble it. And by help, he did all of it. We did get to test out this new Ryobi soldering iron, which uses the same batteries as the rest of our tools. The guitar looks great, but how does it sound? And will it actually even play? We'll show you right after a word from our sponsor for this video, Skillshare. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in creativity. I love that they have classes that focus on specific tangible projects. In fact, the first Skillshare class I took over four years ago was about leather working and I learned how to make a wallet. More recently, I have been interested in developing some modular garden products and I took two Skillshare classes classes that help me get ready for the launch. These classes are a little bit broader and are helping me develop well-rounded business skills that'll assist me with this entrepreneurial endeavor. DIY Product Photography by Mango Street Lab has helped me synthesize both the technical and creative aspects of product photography. I love that the class is broken up into segments so I can skip around right to the parts I need. Now the product I am developing involves plants and I certainly don't have a green thumb. So I also took the class Happy House Plants by the Sill. I loved getting help from an actual botanist. And now I know exactly what plants to use for my product shots. All the Skillshare classes are curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you, and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of a premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So click that link and become a member of this awesome creative community. All right, back to guitars. Now it looks good, but does it play? Now I'm told that it takes a while for the strings to stretch out, so it's still gonna have a little bit of that new guitar sound, but it definitely works. Thank you, Brett, for that little number. And now let's head over to the studio to talk about additional resources for recycling plastics, whether or not this project is actually sustainable, and a few other tricks I learned along the way. So I first learned about recycling plastics from YouTube. I watched a lot of Peter Brown videos, and he was one of the first people I saw that really showed how easy it was to just take something simple like a toaster oven and melt down plastic and make things out of it. I also watched a lot of the Brothers Make videos, and I don't just watch them for their charming uh, accents, but they actually have really great tutorials that show with a, a relatively simple setup, just using things like plywood, how you can make molds and really process plastics at a slightly larger scale and make things like pens and cutting boards and stuff like that. In particular, if you're looking for videos on how to, to finish HDPE plastic, they have some really great videos for that. Now, if you're interested in recycling plastics at a larger scale, say for a product line or a small entrepreneurial endeavor, I would suggest the Precious Plastic Series by One Army. Not only do they have a great video series, they actually design and show how to build these machines that can process more plastics at once. So it's just that kind of scale down from a big industrial setup to sort of a garage industrial setup. And the projects they're doing are really cool. And they're really thinking about the bigger sort of environmental footprint of plastics and these kind of things. Now, is this type of recycling sustainable? Well, certainly keeping plastics out of landfills is a good thing. But when you consider the amount of water that I use to clean all this plastic, scraping off all the, the adhesive and labels and gunk, and then the, the amount of heat and electricity used to, to melt something this substantial, that took a few hours in the oven, not to mention the time, but the blender, and that's a pretty heavy duty blender as you saw. So I think with the labor and energy going into it, it's not particularly ecologically great what we're doing, but I think it is important to start taking the first steps for creative ways to use things that otherwise would end in landfills. Now for me, that involves trying to figure out how to build a large solar oven. I think that if you could eliminate the amount of electricity used to heat and melt this down and can do it through a passive means, that would be a huge improvement. 
also considering that we only have to get it to about somewhere between 250 to 350 degrees, I think you could do that with a large piece of glass, building a big insulated box, and then using a few mirrors, especially out here in the desert, uh, where we could really take a lot of sunlight, put it through that glass into the greenhouse effect, and probably create a really low-tech oven that's big. And big is important because I think this should really be done in sort of steel presses that can have a lot of weight on them at all times. So if we designed a press uh, where we could just keep load, loading in all the plastic shavings and then it would slowly heat up under the sun, get to about 300 degrees, and this could all happen inside uh, the oven. So I think you need a big oven with a low cost sort of energy source to heat it up. So that's what I'm gonna be thinking on for the future if I, if I wanna continue this line. Now this is the first blank that I made. And I didn't use this one because it shrank a lot around the edges. I didn't put that much pressure or weight on the top. And so what happened as it cooled, the plastic pulled away from the edges and rose up in the middle. So it's really thick in the center right here. And then it gets thinner towards the edges and it shrunk about, oh, about like half an inch all the way around. So that was the sort of the learning process. And in the future, I, I really do think oversized steel mold that I could then machine down would probably be a better bet than a semi-flexible mold like the one that I used. Now, I typically just do DIY projects, but I'm also the co-owner of a new furniture line called Hook. And we're using industrial recycled HDPE plastic to make furniture that assembles in less than one minute. We get the HDPE in large sheets, about the size of a piece of plywood, and then we CNC it down and we develop this really cool snap and lock system that doesn't require any screws and it really uses the specific characteristics of the plastic. It's smooth and flexible. So we're able to make these like hinges that lock into place without any mechanical fasteners. We already had a successful Kickstarter launch, so check out that website. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And if you're someone like me that needs to move their furniture around a lot and wants the ability to sort of break it down, slide it under a bed or something like that, and then bring it out when you need it, Hook is a really interesting option for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. It was a, definitely a learning experience and a, quite an adventure. If you wanna see how to recycle plastic bags, my sister Jessie did a really cool project. Uh, it was kind of a while back, but very simple, just using iron and basic plastic shopping bags and made some really cool kind of synthetic leather out of them. So check that video out. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.